So if you're giving out a feeling of I'm okay, I'm good enough as I am, and I am acceptable, and I love life, and I love me, and you start having gratitude for yourself and for life, then life treats you differently because you are having a different vibration that you're giving out and getting back. And that's when things really start to flow. This is a big problem for many people. However, you can always have a successful job if you will change your thinking about work. You will never find working a pleasure if you hate your job or you can't stand your boss. What a terrible affirmation that is. It will be impossible for you to ever attract a great job with that belief system. If you want to enjoy your time at work, then you must change your thinking. I'm a great believer in blessing with love every person, place, and thing at the workplace. Begin with your current job. Affirm that this job is merely a stepping stone to far greater positions. You are in your current job because of the things you believed in the past. You drew it to you by your thinking. Perhaps you learned your attitude towards work from your parents. No matter, you can change your thinking now. So bless with love your boss, your co-workers, the location, the building, the stairs or elevators, the rooms, the furniture, and each and every customer. This creates a loving mental atmosphere within you, and the whole office will respond to it. I have never understood the reasoning behind putting down or berating others at work. If you are an owner, a manager, or a supervisor, how can you possibly expect to get the best work from others if they are frightened or resentful? We all want to be appreciated, acknowledged, and encouraged. If you support your employees and give them respect, then they will give you the best work they can. Now, please don't believe that it is hard to get a job. That may be true for many, but it does not have to be true for you. You only need one job, and your consciousness will open the pathway for you. Don't have faith in fear. When you hear of negative trends in business or in the economy, immediately affirm, that may be true for some, but it is not true for me. I always prosper no matter where I am or what is going on. People often ask me for the affirmations to make their relationships at work be smoother. In fact, for many people, this is a really big issue in their lives. I am deeply aware that whatever I give out comes back to me multiplied. And this is true everywhere, including at work. In the workplace, it is important to know that every employee and employer has been attracted by the action of love, for it's his and her divine right place here and now at this point in time and space. Divine harmony permeates us all, and we can all flow together in the workplace in a most productive and joyous way. There aren't any problems that don't have solutions. There aren't any questions without answers. Choose to go beyond the problem to seek the divine right action solution to any discord that may seem to appear. Be willing to learn from any discord or confusion as it comes up. It's important to release all blame and turn within to seek the truth. And be willing to release whatever pattern may be in your consciousness that has contributed to the situation. Know that you are successful in all that you do. You're inspired and productive. You serve others willingly and gladly. Divine harmony reigns supreme within and around you and within and around each and every person in your workplace. When you know and declare that it's possible to successfully operate in the workplace according to divine principles, then divine love brings to you those who can be helped by that which you so lovingly do. Now, if you like your job but feel you're not getting paid enough, then bless your current salary with love. Expressing gratitude for what you do have enables it to grow. And absolutely no more bitching about the job or co-workers. Your consciousness put you where you are now. Your changing consciousness can lift you to a better position. 
you can do it. During your workday, there are a number of things you can do to release tension. Here are a few ideas. One, before you go to work every day, do this simple exercise. Just sit comfortably and concentrate on your breath. Whenever you notice thoughts coming in, gently bring your awareness back to your breath. Give yourself at least 10 or 15 minutes to dwell in the silence each day. There is nothing difficult or tricky to this, and it's worth taking the time. Two, write or type this affirmation and put it where you can see it at work. My job is a peaceful haven. I bless my job with love. I put love in every corner, and my job lovingly responds with warmth and comfort. I am at peace. When you start to think about your boss, say this affirmation to yourself. I only give out that which I wish to receive. My love and acceptance of others is mirrored to me in every way. Refuse to be limited in any way by human mind thinking. Your life can be filled with love and joy because your work is a divine idea. Some people who would not dream of stealing things will self-righteously rob another person of time or self-esteem. Each time we make another person feel guilty, we are stealing self-worth from them. To be truly honest on all levels takes a great deal of self-examination and self-awareness. When we take something that does not belong to us, we are, in effect, instructing the universe that we don't feel worthy of earning we aren't good enough, we want to be stolen from, or we believe there is not enough to go around. We believe that we must be sneaky and grab to get our good. These beliefs become effective walls around us that prevent us from experiencing abundance and joy in our lives. These negative beliefs are not the truth of our being. We are magnificent and deserve the very best. This planet is abundantly plentiful. Our good always comes to us by the right of consciousness. The work we do in consciousness is always one of refining what we say and think and do. When we clearly understand that our thoughts create our reality, then we use our reality as a feedback mechanism to let us know what we need to change next. Being absolutely honest, down to the last paperclip, is a choice we make out of love for ourselves. Honesty helps to make our lives run more smoothly and more easily. If you go to a store and they don't charge you for something you've bought and you know it, then it's your spiritual obligation to tell them so. If you are aware, you call it to their attention. If you don't know it, or only realize it when you get home or two days later, then that's something different. If dishonesty brings disharmony into our lives, imagine what love and honesty can create. The good in our lives, the wonderful surprises we have, these too we have created. As we look within ourselves with honesty and unconditional love, we will discover so much about our power. What we can learn to create with our own consciousness has far greater value than any amount of money we could possibly steal. Your home is your sanctuary. Everything is a reflection of what you believe you deserve. Look at your home. Is it a place that you really love to live in? Is it comfortable and joyous or cramped, dirty and always messy? The same with your car. Do you like it? How does it reflect the love you have for yourself? Are your clothes a bother and a nuisance and something you have to deal with? Your clothes are also a reflection of how you feel about yourself. Again, the thoughts we have about ourselves can always be changed. If you want to find a new home, Begin by opening yourself up to finding the right place and affirm that it is waiting for you. 
When I was looking for a new home in Los Angeles, I couldn't believe that I would only find appalling places. I kept thinking that this is Los Angeles and it's filled with wonderful apartments, so where are they? It took me six months to find the one I wanted, and it was magnificent. During the time I was looking, the building was being constructed, and when it was finished, I found it waiting for me. If you look for something, but you're not finding it, there is probably a good reason. If you want to move from where you are because you don't like it, thank your present home for being there. Appreciate it for sheltering you from the weather. If it's difficult to like it, start with one part of the house that you like. It may be a corner of your bedroom. Don't say, I hate this old place. Because if you do, you're not going to find something that you love. Love where you are, so you can be open to receiving a wonderful new home. If your home is messy and cluttered, then start cleaning it up. Your home is a reflection of your mind.